Hi team and welcome uh, and it's one of those really exciting days today uh, and we are so excited to bring you along to introduce a brand new brand. Um, I say exciting because a lot of the cricket world we have a lot of similarity year in year out so we do here at Sirius get really excited when a brand new brand joins us, we put it into stock and we got so excited about this one we've actually brought them along for a chat so really excited to welcome you to ME plus U. Further ado, let's introduce ourselves. Chris from Sirius, uh, retail manager, and welcome Matt. And Matt, yeah. would you like to just do a little bit of uh, an intro about yourself? Yeah, of course. Uh, Matt Carter, um, founder of uh, Me Plus You. Um, we founded um, the actual footwear project back in 2019. Um, so it's been about a four year process to get to where we are today through various design uh, revisions as well as testing and prototyping. It's been a journey, I'd imagine, through all of that, and hopefully we'll unpick some of that for um, for you guys uh, and try and bring a bit of that to life to where you are now. Um, but if we go all the way back to the beginning, have you got a cricket background? Have you come into this through cricket itself? What What's the sort of starting so, point for you? So starting point for, for me is um, played cricket all the way through school age group, village cricket. I'm very much an amateur cricketer. Um, the reason why I got into cricket shoes and designing them is because in 2019 um, I had quite a nasty cricket injury. I dislocated my left ankle right. whilst bowling. Whilst playing, okay. Yeah. Um, and in my delivery stride my ankle just went sideways. So um, when looking at my comeback, um, I was looking at fair shoes and vice versa to see whether or not there was something that would help with that because it needed more support and stability. Um, and there wasn't really anything out there. Right. Um, I did have a conversation with one brand um, who didn't want to uh, tailor, alter, adapt, or make amendments to their shoe. Um, so I started on a journey of um, looking into various design principles for shoes generally. So barefoot running, biomechanics, um, load transfer. Um, and that's where the journey began really. So it, it's probably safe to say that it's sort of, until that point, probably not something that was on your radar of creating a footwear brand and bringing it to the cricket world. It was circumstantial yeah. cricket that led you into that, through that door. Yeah. Um, and, and then the journey sort of beyond. So once you kind of established that there wasn't anything sort of there on the market and you say I actually started to do a bit of research, what was the research starting to sort of tell you or, or suggest to you might be your sort of direction that um, that would offer something different. Was there something that was there some standouts there or? Yeah, I think I think um, I think the key to it was finding designers that had experience, not just in cricket but stop start sport. So I was very lucky that um, we had two designers that have both worked in cricket um, across basketball, tennis, um, including rugby, football. So they're very experienced. They work for one of the world's largest brands. Um, and they really liked um, the vision of creating a cricket shoe that was different with more support um, and to try and take the load away from ankles, knees and lower back. Um, so right from concept stage it introduced principles of um, supporting the inside as well as the outside of the foot um, as well as trying to take the load away um, from the ankle by diverting it down into the ground at more of a 45 degree angle. Um, <clears throat> one of the other principles that we looked at was creating flexibility through mm -hmm. the toes and the forefoot. So a lot of cricket shoes, because of the way they're plated um, for the spikes to screw in, you don't get flexibility through the toe box. So it was really important for us to have that flexibility. But I think you've kind of picked up very quickly there conversations that we have with customers in the shop, um, particularly from, from young fast bowlers all the way through yeah. to seasoned fast bowlers or seam bowlers. Um, and, the, and the load that goes over that front foot and, and, and quite clearly players that are struggling with injury or have had issues with injury and, and trying to find something that works for them. So I can quite clearly see where that vision um, clearly came from from your own circumstances and we see it and we hear about it a lot in the shop. So going back to being really excited for us when we first started to see this and, and, and meet with you and see this 
process taking shape, we were always excited about something that makes a difference in the cricket world and being able to offer that to the, to the customer base. Um, so if we fast forward a little bit in that, because that, that process clearly is you know, in a lot of detail and, and moving it forward into say the last sort of six to 12 months, um, when did you sort of, did, was there a moment when you think actually we've really got something here, you can kind of recognize these shoes taking shape? Was there a time there where you thought actually we're really onto something different and with, you know, your own excitement kind of levels really increased? Yeah, I think if you go back 12, 14 months ago when we first received our very first prototype, um, it was under a different brand name at that point in time. Um, it was under a different color, so it was a red shoe, different brand name. Um, but in reality, the principles of the shoe haven't really changed. Mm. I think it was that, that very early prototype that got us really excited. Um, it allowed us to start having conversations with investors, um, with potential sales agents, managers, mm. um, including retailers, yeah. just like Serious Cricket. Um, uh, it also allowed us to start testing the shoe, um, whether with amateurs or with pros. I mean, we've been very fortunate with who we've had to test the shoes, um, from some of the, uh, the Rajasthan Royals under Stephen Jones, um, through to um, Megan Bell, Darcy Carter at Kent, um, some of the Millfield School Academy, um, and probably more locally, one of the Vipers Academy mm -hmm. in Gemma Porter, yep. who tested them last summer. Yeah, and, and, and that's, I think, a really important, it's, it's real world, isn't it? You know, it's, it's people who are uh, in, it, day in, day out, bowling. Um, you know, you mentioned Stefan, who's obviously a, an expert in his field in terms of biomechanical movement and the, and the fast bowling sort of um, journey. And, and I guess once you start putting it in front of those um, players and coaches and, and experts, and they're all starting to give you pretty positive feedback. I'd imagine at that point you thought actually we're onto something here that could really sort yeah. of um, hit yeah, the it, market really well. It, I mean, it, it was an incredible process of testing because the feedback was, these are comfortable, they provide support. Um, I feel like I could wear them all day. And that doesn't necessarily happen with a no, cricket absolutely. shoe. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but we were even more fortunate from talking to agents to get um, express fast bowlers to test them as mm. well because that really is where most of the pressure comes onto your feet so um, Jason Holder's worn a pair um, we had Alzari Joseph trialing them in West Indies training um, so that's really exciting mm. um, and and, I, and you've mentioned a couple of West Indies quicks there and I suppose that nicely leads on to the name that perhaps people who know about you already and have, yeah. and have seen sort of uh, with the brand is Kyron Pollard and, and that's a fantastic sort of uh, uh, opportunity to talk to a, a, an expert, a world superstar and I guess somebody that has access to supporting you into getting into these players. How, how did that come about? How did you kind of um, start that, that route? Um, so. Um Karen Pollard came about through a relationship with his manager. Um, so um, one of the employees at Insignia Sports, um, Jimmy Alder, um, he's best friends with one of my friends from university. Right. So that's how I met Eddie Tolchard, who's the CEO, who looks after um, Polly personally. Mm -hmm. um, so we were uh, in the market for investment and Eddie was going out to Bangladesh to go and meet Polly. He said, um, I'll take a shoe with me. I can't promise anything, um, but let's see whether Polly likes the shoe. Yeah. So Polly um, had a size 11 sample. He's a size 13 in a hotel room in Bangladesh. He, <laughs> he pushed his, his size 13 foot into a pair of size 11s and he loved them so much that he committed to invest as well as being an ambassador. Fantastic. I mean, it's things like that that just you know you're really onto something when somebody of that ilk is is doing it in that way. Um, so, the name, how, how did that come about? Is that something that's sort of um, always been part of the journey or has that come about sort of late on or how did that come about? I think it actually is part of the journey. So, Me Plus You um, is essentially um, a, a flip around of an old client of mine called You and I, um, who were um, uh, a developer in London um, and the me part signifies pretty, pretty much myself or indeed the company and the you is everybody else that has contributed into the process whether it's 
designers or testers or people buying the shoe because without the U, um, the brand wouldn't be here. Sure, yeah. And I think it, uh, we've had the brand in uh, relatively recently, but the, the, the resonate, how that resonates with, with a customer base, you can see it already that people kind of are putting those things together and, and working it out, but it, it, it sort of draws people in straight away. Um, but once they sort of get, I think it, it's brilliant. I think it really works in terms of that inclusivity um, with yourselves and, and your customer base. So I think it's fantastic in terms of that. Um, and it's all its time, it's modern. It, it, it's, you know, it, it has that modern look as a logo and I think it just you know, has shelf appeal. All those things are brilliant. So um, fantastic. Um, so I think that probably brings us up to, to where we are now, which is, um, should we jump into the shoes themselves yeah, and just kind of um, give a bit of an overview for, for you guys in terms of what is the, the range for 2024 as it stands? So um, I'll sort of obviously pass to you as the expert, um, but just to kind of give that a little bit of a starting point. Um, we've got the bowling boot, um, so we sort of um, uh, men's bowling boot, men's all-rounder shoe um, primarily. And then probably um, one of the ones that we were most excited about, which is the, the women's um, all-rounder shoe, which uh, we'll come on to in terms of the spec there, but a, but a purpose-built um, female-orientated shoe, which again um, is just sort of revolutionary in terms of the cricket market. Um, but if we take them one by one, so um, I think there's a lot of similarities across the design and across the spec. Um, but in terms of a, a pure sort of bowling boot, um, can you just sort of talk us through the the specific kind of um, detail of what that's offering a, a fast bowler in terms of the, the setup? Yeah, of course. So um, essentially um, what we've got, we've got a unique heel counter, um, which is unique to the Me Plus U brand. So uh, the intention for this is to transfer load down into the ground at a 45 degree angle rather than uh, straight through your ankle into your knees and lower back. The other element to this, um, to quote Stefan, is that it actually helps reduce ground contact time. So if you're a fast bowler, um, it can make a difference mm -hmm. in terms of percentages of extra speed or pace. Um, if we look at the bottom of the shoe, we've got our own um, unique um, midsole uh, arch support. Um, completely unique to us is that we provide both um, support on the inside and the outside of the shoe to really create a stable platform to be able to either bowl spin or bowl fast. Um, those are probably the more unique features of the shoe. The other um, feature that we have with the shoe is that we've actually got a, a solid toe cap. So if you are batting, um, and a bit like me, and a bowl and you get hit on the toe, it's not going to hurt as much and hopefully reduce the chance of broken toes and uh, black tone out. <laughs> the, the old adage of, um, of fast bowlers treating their fellow fast bowlers sort of uh, a little bit lightly is probably a, it's probably a thing of the, of, the, uh, of the past and certainly the sort of the nose and toes shouts uh, out in the slip cord and is quite, quite rife. So something that protects you sort of all through the whole game. Um, again, really important for, for players, particularly those fast bowlers who are batting at 10 or 11. Uh, fantastic, and I think from a fast bowler's perspective, um, you can quite, quite quickly see um, some real benefit and some real positives in the design and in the quality of the shoe to, to really offset that, that impact and what you need. Um, the all-rounder shoe, is that sort of, what, what differences do we see from the bowler's boot from, so, to the all-rounder shoe? The all-rounder is designed um, on a bowler's shoe chassis, so it's got the same heel detail, it's got stabilisation on uh, the inside and the outside, it's got the same um, protective toe um, to prevent Yorkers or if you're like me hitting your toes with your bat. Um, the main difference is actually in the sock detail, so it's a, uh, uh, a sock detail around the shoe um, rather than a fly knitted collar. Um, it's just the, the bowling shoe uh, provides that additional support around the ankle and the Achilles. Um, and then the third shoe in the range um, currently um, which, as I said before, the, the, the female orientated shoe uh, for the women's fit, um, which we were particularly excited to, to see from when you first started talking about it quite early on in the process. 
um, and then to see the finished article and uh, read about the the quality and the uh, research and the background that's gone into to creating that. So again, for for our um, uh, female sort of cricket um, clientele who are looking for something for themselves or parents who are looking for sort of their daughters. Um, you just sort of bring that to life in terms of what the researchers sort of suggested yeah, of and then what you've done with the um, shoe to create what we think yeah. is probably one of the only okay. women's orientated sort of um, bits of cricket footwear. So um, we designed the shoe um, after um, several conversations with Lydia Greenway, um, who's one of our advisors, um, and the sheer lack of um, suitable footwear for women. Uh, in cricket, which extends across other sports. Um, so the research, um, as well as technical papers, show quite clearly that there's a significant difference in the form and shape and size of women's feet compared to men. Um, so women are predominantly narrower in the, uh, in the heel. Um, they've got a more predominant arch, um, so there's more curvature, so the midsole is actually higher to give that support um, and also they're wider across the toe box but narrower in the uh, in the big toe area um, so we provided a shoe after scanning a number of female feet that fits those criteria again it's um, designed on a very similar chassis to the bowler shoe so there's support on the inside the outside as well as the unique heel counter what we've already seen in the shop from people coming in is once they put their foot in there, they really understand and recognise the differences. So a huge tick in the box from our, our perspective, seeing it you know, already, which you know, fantastic. Um, you mentioned a few names already in terms of the testing. Um, clearly in terms of a brand new brand coming to market and wanting to sort of um, get that visibility at the, at the top end of the game in particular. Have you already got players, um, ambassadors that you've lined up and, and are within the shoes and, and, and who are they? What, what, are they uh, what are they sort of saying in terms of uh, the feedback already? Yeah, so we've, we've got a number of um, ambassadors already. Um, we've already mentioned Polly. Um, so he's a massive lover of the shoes. Um, through Polly we've had Dwayne Bravo test the shoes as well, who really, really loves them. Um, and hopefully we're going to see him wearing them in the cricket that he plays. Um, the other ambassadors um, that we have um, are uh, female cricketers. Um, so we've got my Bauchier, um, so Sun Vipers, um, as well as England. Uh, we've got Lauren Filer, um, who's also England, but Western Storm. Uh, we've got Grace Scrivens, um, who's South East Stars, Kent and England A captain at the moment. Uh, all three of them are out of New Zealand at the moment for the various internationals that are ongoing. Um, we've got Megan Bell, who's Kent captain, or recently appointed mm -hmm. Kent captain, mm -hmm. um, taking over from Tammy Beaumont. Um, and we've got Kent and Scotland um, batter off spinner Darcy Carter. And I think what's really fantastic in terms of, particularly on the female side of the game, is the differing aspects that they bring to the game. So Maya is an opening bat uh, and a sort of a fielder in that inner ring. Um, her, her demands from a Lauren Filer is probably quite different in terms of what they're looking for. The fact that they are in these shoes and um, giving great positive feedback at the top end of the female game is fabulous. You know, it really bringing, I would imagine, from your perspective, really bringing the brand to life, giving great impetus into the into the world of cricket at the moment. From a perspective of a customer, um, I think on, on price point, uh, you can obviously um, check out on our website. Uh, at Serious Cricket and, and also in the shop, um, but really uh, in terms of the price points for these, we, we see it as very competitively priced against the other brands, um, which I think is great because I think actually given what you've suggested, uh, given what you've said that's in there in terms of the quality and what that is bringing, people will start to see that as a competitive price and also what they're gaining from, from that. So um, have a look on our website and have a look at the price points or drop in to, to try the shoes on. We've got them in stock now. Um, so I think that's something that, while well, stocks last, because I suspect they'll be going quite quick, well hopefully quite quickly and we'll be restocking, but get yourselves in pretty quickly or have a look online for, for what the options are. That brings us sort of from, from the journey to, to right now. Um, 
dare I ask, what, what's next? For sure, I, I mean, something that we're working on at the moment um, is finalising what our Astro shoe will be. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully subject to investment, we'll have an Astro shoe available for next year. Um, I think this year for us is, it's a pioneering year for us. It's also a year for us to get some um, really valuable, honest feedback, whether that's from um, the England women or whether it's some of the amateur cricketers that are buying the shoes. Um, we want to improve what we're doing um, and we can't do that without your feedback. Matt, thank you ever so much. That's been fantastic. A bit of a whistle-stop tour through the journey and I imagine um, talking through the last 18 months, two years of, of well, four years as you sort of um, said from the outset really, um, putting that and condensing that, it probably doesn't quite sound as when you're living it every day, day to day, and all the things that you've kind of been through. But thank you for bringing that to life. Um, hopefully the um, uh, viewers have, have really taken a lot of detail there. Um, just to echo that from our perspective, um, if you need or would like any more information, do get in touch with us. Um, we are now stocking them. So we've got the shoes in, in store. We've got all the information. I'm more than happy, of course, to, to start talking to people about it and what, um, and what the best options for you are. Thank you for your time, Matt, really appreciate it. Um, if you've liked the video, um, please like us, give us a big thumbs up, and um, please leave a comment. We're always interested in your comments, um, hopefully mostly positive, but if you've got any questions or queries, please drop them in the comments as well. Um, please subscribe, we've got lots more videos coming, particularly as we're just about to start the season. Um, so subscribe so you get those, and hopefully we'll see you again very soon.